Now let's talk like we know what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Moto Photo Adventures and today I'm going to go over to Jason's house and we are going to do some fun monkeying on the bikes. What are we doing today, Jason? It's Sprocket and Chain Day. Woohoo! Why is that? Well, it started making a whole lot of knocking noises uh, on our last tapped three. Uh, so we... What episode was that? Uh, 24 mm. is when we fixed it. 23, so it, apparently it's a, a kink and a link. Mm. Uh, and so in episode, a kink and a link. A kink and a link, something from Dr. Seuss. It's the name of my next heavy metal band. <laughs> um, so <laughs> on episode 24, we fixed it in the field uh, and greased it, um, sprayed it and everything. And, and we'll put a little link above for that episode. We fixed it in the, in, in the field and everything is fine, but it's gotten continually worse. I think it's an old chain. Um, the bike is a 2011. I think the sprocket and the chain is the original, mm -hmm. and it's got 18,000 miles, over 18,000 miles on it now, but it's a 10-year-old chain. It's not a lot of miles for a chain, not a lot of miles for a sprocket, but it's but a lot it's of years. It's resting on the inside. It's a lot of years. So I figure we'll, we'll replace both the sprockets and the chain, start fresh, mm -hmm. that way I know where I'm starting from, mark it on the calendar, et cetera, et cetera. So today is the day for those three things. And we do recommend changing sprocket and chain, so both sprockets and chains at the same time, just because, you know, if one is wearing more, like the, the front one wears twice to three times as fast as the back one, and if you're replacing them all at the same time, you know you're starting with everything matching up perfectly instead of new chain, old sprocket, wear the chain out faster. Exactly. I'm learning. You're a hey, this is awesome. <laughs> yeah, I can repeat stuff I read just as good as anyone. <laughs> okay, so um, first thing we gotta do then is uh, get started taking the cover off. All right. Eight millimeter. teeth on that. Oh, wee! That bad boy needs to be replaced. So to get to this 32 millimeter nut, we have to remove this little piece. I would suggest not messing with this and just remove this portion so that you can get in there. This is a 10 millimeter here. And the one on the bottom. All right, so. Just like that. And we can just let it hang and remember how it goes. Once the clutch mechanism is released and out of the way, we have the nut on the inside. There's a flat piece of the washer right here. And if you notice, it's round on every side and flat on that side so that it keeps the nuts from spinning. So what we have to do is we have to bend that up so that we can release that nut. The bike is in neutral, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just put a towel around the a dowel rod or a broom handle and stick it through here to keep the tire from spinning, maybe. Right there. And then the towels just to keep the rim protected. Screwdriver, hammer, get up underneath there. Might take a little doing. So once you got the back wheel locked and you have the washer flattened on here, all you have to do is take your 32 millimeter and start loosening it. Now, if this is not going to come off for you, you can use an extender. Here's just a piece of pipe that I put on the end to give me more leverage. And if that's not enough, go with something bigger. <laughs> Behold his mighty hand. We're not through yet. So now we're just gonna finish taking this off of here. The sleep. Also, that washer behind this nut, get it as flat as you can. And if you can't get it all the way, just put some muscle behind it and the nut will flatten it out the rest of the way as it turns. Take the washer off. And then we will loosen the back to get the chain off. So we move to the back and before we take the back wheel off, we have to take the brake caliper off and that is two 12 millimeter nuts right here. Oh, 
actually, it's a 12 and something else. What do you think it could be? It's a 14. <laughs> Apparently, they want to make it difficult, so you have to use two different sockets on the same piece of gear. Jason doesn't like me asking him questions when he's working. So I'll ask you guys, leave in the comments below, why is it that manufacturers put different sizes on different sides of the bike? For example, on the axle. You have a what size on this side? We have a 24 on my side. And a 22 on this side. Correct. Do you know why? Leave an answer in the comments below. There's a very good reason for it. There it goes. Okay. Brakes. Watch the pin. Watch the pin. Watch the pin. This little piece right here. And then I'm going to bungee this out of the way. Boom. All right, so now the brakes are out of the way, let's loosen up the axle. 22 over there, 24 over here, and let's break it loose. So use a little extension if you can't get it done. Work smarter, not harder. I want you to work smarter, not harder, lad. So after we loosen the axle bolts for the rear wheel, we are now going to loosen the Allen wrench, uh, the Allen bolts with the chain tensioner. So we come down here and we loosen these so that we can push the wheel forward to remove the old chain. So now we can remove the dowel that's holding the wheel from spinning. So the next step is to take off the chain so that we can remove the back wheel before we can get to the sprocket. Well, Dremel time. We gotta get rid of one of these pins and then we will use the chain breaker to push the pin out to remove the chain. We have the chain breaker tool. We have a guide screw here. We have a plunger screw here. And inside we have the plunger with a spring and it is the 3.8 millimeter plunger. So, see the little plunger that's coming up here? We're gonna back that off till it's inside again. Then on this side, on the back side, we're gonna put this where the rivet on the back side of the chain of the link that we want to remove. Then we're going to tighten up the outside guide bolt until it's snug. Then we're gonna take a 9 16 and we're gonna tighten that up just a bit to keep it on there. Like that. Then tighten the plunger bolt and the plunger. Make sure it's all seated nice and secure and centered. Handle. And we go at it. That's much better on your hands. What you see, buddy? Huh? Somebody out there? And... Pin. Awesome! So we remove this tool and the plunger. And we have a loose chain. So now that we have the chain taken off, all we have to do is take the wheel off. Take the bolt off, or the nut off. Rubber mallet. <laughs> Rubber mallet. So now we gotta push the axle out. Remove the back wheel. <laughs> and just remember these two little spacers that you've got in here, those are probably going to fall off. Correct. And over here, this bracket comes out as well, so be careful with that. Also, there's a little clip on here. Make sure you don't lose that little piece. It stays right there. So I'm just going to lay this over here like that with the brakes. And then let's little, get the wheel out. spacer right there, you probably want to pop oh, that out. This little spacer stays right there, so or we're not. gonna put it right here. There. 
All right, so now that the tire's off, we can take off the sprocket. But first, we want to take a look at it. This one doesn't look too bad. It's 10 years old, but it doesn't look like the wear is terrible. But the proof is in the front sprocket. So let's go ahead and take this one off since we're replacing everything. So we've loosened all of these. Let's take a look at the new one. Awesome. Oh, beautiful. And then we tighten it back up. Okay, we all we got them all snug. And so now we're going to use torque wrench and put it to 44. Do alternating ones. tight so that they all go down evenly. Okay, so we got the back sprocket on. It's time to take the chain off. Make sure it's in neutral and just pull it out. It doesn't have a lot of miles on it, but it does have a lot of years on it. And so it's stuck right there, really bad. Oh, good grief, there it is, right there. That's stuck. Yep, that was the one right there. That one don't move very well. So that was our spot. Okay, and we remove the sprocket. We looked at the back sprocket and it didn't look terrible. Let's take a look at what the front one looks like. Yeah, those teeth look like they're a little curved. So they got a lot of wear on the in, on this side and it's flat on that side. You can see they're all kind of curved in comparison. Not. So basically from here on out is the reverse of what we did. Time to put the front sprocket on. Lay these out and compare. And oh, it is stretched and it's also thicker. We appreciate you uh, telling us everything that happened um, mm. thanks for coming in you ready to go sure um this feels a little bit too i thought this was supposed to be anonymous this feels wrong all right is that better mm. yeah that, that's good but you're gonna disguise my voice right oh geez okay hold on test one two wait am i simon alvin or theodore i ordered the james earl jones tell me what happened what are you gonna do chain my hands Okay. Now we got the light right? It's fine. And voice is okay? It's not quite James Earl Jones, but it'll do. All right. Well, let's get started. Tell us what happened. I don't think I want to anymore. That's okay. We've got what we needed. I ordered the wrong chain.
now it's time to put on the master link. So we make sure our components are here and we grease up the O-rings. Now we put the O-rings on the master link. link in the back. Put the back of the master link in. Put the O-rings on this side. With some grease. Place this side. Now we get out the chain breaker to put it back together which is the riveter side of it. So we have the two pieces that will squeeze the chain, front side, back side. It's just barely hanging on. So you wanna be careful, gently on there. Make sure it's in the right spot on the back. There's a little ridge or groove right here, if you can see it, if I get it in the light for you. There's a little groove down this piece here. That'll go on each side, on the back side of these two little, of the rivets, to hold it in place and in the right direction. So make sure that those are on there. Tighten this down finger tight just to get it going. Take your time on this, because you know, you don't want to have to grind it back off and start all over. So our objective here, is to make sure that the back side is seated on each side of the rivets back there and the front side is seated correctly on the front where these holes the holes there need to line up with what you're going with the pin that's going through so next I'm just going to take a caliper and I'm going to measure the links around it to see what my goal is for the tightness that says 0.14 there I'm going to measure one on the bottom just to be safe Point one four. Awesome. Okay, now let's just give this a little squeeze, a little bit at a time, and back it off just to make sure that we're heading in the right direction. I gave it one good old squeeze, about a quarter of a turn to half a turn, just to make sure that the rivets are coming through the holes properly. Now I'll do that again. About a half a turn, half a turn, half a turn, a bunch of different times, measuring with a caliper to see how close we're getting because you don't want to go too far. You can't back it back off. Go ahead and check it as you're doing this. Go ahead and check it by eye till you see that it's going to get kind of close. We're a good distance yet. I've got it so that the rivets are popping out right here. And so I'm going to measure it. That is 0 0.18, 0 0.14. Do it again just to make sure. 0 0.15, 0 0.14, depending on how you hold your mouth. Measure that one. 0 0.17, I am so close. All right, one more twist. All right, after a couple of back and forths, let's measure that to see how close we are. we are ooh, 0 0.15 the others are 0.14 I'm calling that good now I'm gonna say one more thing here once you get the rivets to start popping out be very careful before you do make sure the holes are lined up I keep ducking down to make sure the bottom one is lined up because if the rivets aren't lined up to the hole they're gonna bump up against this plate and it's not gonna pop through so do it you know take a look a bunch of times make sure it's coming through but once it is and you're having to take it off and on to do the measurement these then, once they pop through just a little bit, they sit that nicely, just like the backside does, and you don't have to worry about it anymore. So now that we have the master link on there at the correct measurement, we're going to remove these plates, and we're going to grab the rivet. So we have the rivet piece and the spring that goes on it. Now notice on the end, We've got that little roundy piece. That's the part that's gonna push in the rivet. And then this flat piece is gonna 
kind of give you an indication when you've gone far enough. So let's put this in here. And we put this in here. Until we see it start to come out right there. The plunger in there, the rivet tool portion, and we're going to put the guide back in here for the back side of the master link. So what I've done here is, and I'm gonna try to show you, I'm gonna back this out, and then for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna push the riveter portion out further than it needs to, just so that I can make sure it's sitting in there properly, and that the back side is locked in properly as well. And then, I'm going to screw this down tight and kind of maneuver it so that I make sure that it's in there. There we go. Cool. Now we tighten it a little bit at a time, just like the other. Okay. So we've cranked this down on a probably eight times, but one thing I did want to mention is that I alternated back and forth. So I'd do a small turn on this one, I'd move it down, small turn on this one, just like you would do like oh, when you're changing your tire, you go alternating lugs. So I figured that would make sense, and if it's not necessarily, it made me feel better. So uh, we've riveted these downs so that it's practically flush with the rivet tool, flat. So I suspect that that's pretty darn good. Let's move on. The chain is on there, so the next step is to tighten these back up just enough to get the slack out of the chain for the next step. Not all the way tight because we're not adjusting the slack on the chain perfectly yet. We just want this to be in a spot where we can do the rest. So make sure that it's in neutral. Then we're going to stick a rod through here to keep the wheel from spinning. If it's in gear and you try to put some torque on the front sprocket nut, you're gonna put tension on your, or undo strain on your transmission. So put it in neutral, put a th bar through here so that you can keep the wheel from spinning. Next, we wanna tighten this down. All right, bend the washer back over. All right, now we put this back on. Put the cover back on. Cool, now the cover's on. Let's adjust the correct slack for the chain. Tighten up the Allen wrench to the same on both sides, making sure that we have, for my motorcycle, one inch of variance. Pretty darn close. I'd say that's dead on. And now we all have to do is tighten up the axles. And there we go, front sprocket, chain, rear sprocket. If all goes well, it won't fall apart. Well, Zebra, you came through the surgery quite well. I suggest you rest for about a day, maybe an afternoon, and then you can go back to normal activity.